Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving a functional equation. We have f of x plus 1 over x equals x to the 7th power plus 1 over x to the 7th power and we're going to be solving for f. And I'll be presenting two methods but one of the methods may be incomplete. So we have this equation, I guess we could call this a heptic or a septic equation because of the 7th powers whatever some people don't like the word septic so I'm, I'm just gonna skip that one and let's see how we can solve this first method I want to go ahead and call this expression something oh by the way there seems to be a third method for this problem which I should probably talk about so let me go ahead and pause this first method and talk about the third method real quick because we're not gonna complete it it's gonna be incomplete um, and second could also be, I don't know, maybe the first. But anyways, uh, I'll just quickly go over it, okay? I just wanted to, I just thought about it. If you go ahead and call this t, x plus 1 over x equals t, then you can go ahead and solve this equation. And that is going to be actually a quadratic, right? It's going to be like this, x squared plus 1 is equal to tx, and then x squared minus tx plus 1 equals 0. This is quadratic, so we can go ahead and solve for x. x is going to give us from here negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Remember the quadratic formula? Now, there's two values, but I don't think it's going to make a difference which one you use. Uh, let's just go ahead and go with the plus sign. doesn't matter. Let's just go ahead and use this. So what you can do next is, and let me know how that goes, because that's going to be an exercise for you. You can replace x with this here and here right and then simplify the right hand side good luck with that and then you should get the answer because that's going to give you f of t and our goal is to solve for f of some variable hopefully x it doesn't matter it's not the same x by the way and hopefully you can do that and let me know if this method actually will give you the answer we come up with with the first and second method who knows one of them might be incomplete and it's only going to be one of these okay Go back to the first method, all right? So we're going to use something similar, but also at the same time, very different. I'm gonna go ahead and call this something, and this time let's go ahead and use something else, like how about t, right? If you set x plus one over x equal to t, again, with the third method, you can use a quadratic, please let me know how that goes if you ever try doing it. That's gonna be a good exercise, definitely. All right, so let's see. Now, what we can do, I have x plus 1 over x, which is a special expression, by the way, if you're dealing with math computations, either coaching, teaching, or studying, or preparing for, uh, you should definitely know these tricks. The, the, this is very common. So I'm going to go ahead and square both sides, and that's going to give me x squared plus 1 over x squared, there's an advantage of writing it this way, plus 2 is equal to t squared, and from here my goal is to solve for this. Let's go ahead and isolate it, x squared plus 1 over x squared is equal to t squared minus 2 from here. Great. So let's go ahead and save that, right? And then uh, we're going to go ahead and see what else we can do with that. And so my goal is to get to the seventh power. How can I do that? I got the second power, and what I can do is, actually, I can actually take this, right, and then square both sides again. Guess what that's going to give me? The fourth powers. x to the fourth plus 1 over x to the fourth plus 2ab. Notice that these are reciprocals, so they're going to cancel out, giving us 2. And right hand side, t to the fourth minus 40 squared plus 4. If you, if you go ahead and subtract 2 from both sides, and that'll give you x to the fourth plus 1 over x to the fourth as t to the fourth minus 40 squared plus 4 minus 2 plus 2. All right? So that's going to be our sum of fourth powers. We needed the second powers for the fourth, okay? Now, we're going to start with the basics again, and this time I'm going to go ahead and use x plus 1 over x equals t, and this time, instead of squaring our fourth powers, I'm going to cube both sides. You see what I'm getting at? Now, this is going to give me x cubed plus 1 over x cubed. Again, there's an identity that I use, which is a cubed plus b cubed plus 3ab, times the quantity a plus b. So 3ab is just going to be a 3, and then x plus 1 over x equals t cubed. Uh-oh, this is the same thing as t. So now from here we can isolate x cubed plus 1 over x cubed as t cubed, right, minus 3t. 
Awesome. So we have the sum of cubes. We have the sum of fourth powers. Guess what we're going to do with them? We're going to do jumbo mumbo. In other words, we're going to multiply those. And what happens if you do multiply them? You get seventh powers, right? But you also get something else, but that's perfectly fine. Now, notice that the sum of the fourth powers is equal to t to the fourth minus 4t squared plus 2. This is it. And this is t cubed minus 3t. And on the right hand side, let's go ahead and distribute. This is going to give me x to the seventh power. And then when you multiply x to the fourth by x, 1 over x cubed, which is x to the fourth divided by x cubed, which is going to give you an x, and then 1 over x, and then 1 over x to the seventh power. This is super nice because x to the seventh plus 1 over x to the seventh plus x plus 1 over x. Now notice that on the left hand side, we do have an interesting product. We're going to distribute that in a little bit. I'll tell you what it is. And then we're going to multiply these two polynomials. The keyword is polynomials. And then on the right hand side, this is what we're looking for. So that's a question mark. And this is t, right? So we're, we can go ahead and throw that on the left hand side. After doing all the work, we're going to end up with this. x to the 7th plus 1 over x to the 7th equals. Now this is coming up in terms of t. Ready? t to the 7th minus 7t to the 5th plus 14 t to the third minus 7t. Notice that everything is a multiple of 7 except for the leading coefficient, of course. But that's basically what the answer is, and that's what we've been looking for. All right? Great. So let's go ahead and see if we can use the second method and how we can use it. For my second method, I want to do something different. So the third method is already out of the way, hopefully, right? And if you haven't checked it, please go ahead and check it out. I talked about it right after the first method, really briefly. But the second method should be something different. So let's go ahead and do this. This is equal to t, right? Well, it's s, q, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to use t again because I like t um, both ways, <laughs> right? And uh, I'm going to go ahead and raise both sides to the seventh power this time and use the binomial theorem, good old binomial theorem. That, there's, a, there's a reason why we have that, right? Obviously, you should use it. So if you consider the, you know, the Pascal's triangle and all that stuff, you know, just expand the coefficients, combinatorial coefficients, whatever, so on and so forth. There's a lot of terms, so I'm going to have to use the next line for that. Oops, that's a 21. Uh, and we have the symmetry. Notice that if you can write half of this, then the rest is just symmetrical, just reflection. And then this is equal to t to the seventh power. So my goal from here is to solve for this plus Wait a minute, where's my, okay, one over, here we go. I almost lost it. Now, I, I want to find that sum, but I'm getting a lot of other things, aren't I? So let's go ahead and see this. Uh, first, I'm going to organize this a little bit, x to the seventh plus one over x to the seventh. And then obviously here, we're going to uh, cancel out one of the x's. This is going to turn into x to the fifth. And notice that the same thing happens here, but only at the denominator. And notice that these two have the same coefficient. So we can kind of uh, do this. Take out a 7 and write it like this. And the same thing can be done for x cubed. And notice that we don't have any even powers here. That's also cool, right? Because we're dealing with 7 here. And this whole thing is equal to 2 to the 7th. Now, how do I find x plus 1? How do I find this? And how do I find that? We found this before, so we could probably just cheat, right? But to find the fifth power, Again, I'm going to use the same idea, raise this to the fifth power. And let me just quickly tell you, without further ado, this is going to look like that. We don't have to go through all the steps because you can do those on your own really easy to do, right? Hopefully. And then if you have any questions, though, always let us know. And here, this is what we're trying to solve for, right? We should know this from uh, beforehand. That was t cubed minus 3t in terms of t, of course. This is t and this is t. So from here, x to the fifth plus 1 over x to the fifth can be found as follows. We're going to subtract from t to the fifth 5 times this and then 10 times that, right? This is x to the fifth plus 1 over x to the fifth. That's the sum of fifth powers. I already know the third powers. All I have to do is plug those in and find the answer. And I'm pretty sure you can do that on your own, right? This will be incomplete. Sorry about that. Don't hit me for this. But again, that will be the answer. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.